Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. In this video, I want to talk about interfaces and abstract classes and give a quick rundown of the differences and how you could use them in your Unity projects. And to do this, I think I'm just going to go through and build out a real quick demonstration of just the code and how I would set all this kind of stuff up. So first, let's go with something like a um, maybe a vehicle, like a car, right? So say I want to create a car in my game. I've just got a car script. I'm going to create these all in the root because it's just a simple thing. Um, and I've got a car and maybe this car can take damage. So one thing I could do is go to create C sharp script and make an interface and maybe call it like a, I take damage, right? And interfaces in general with C sharp start with the uppercase I before the, the name instead of like, I think there's kind of the only file where there's really a very specific naming structure for them. And it doesn't have to be that way technically, but it's just a big common C sharp standard. So what I want to do first is change this. Instead of being public class, I'll make it public interface and I'll get rid of everything else. And then what we can do here is just define a contract for any class that wants to have this interface. So if, if anything has I take damage added to it, and I'll show you how to do that in just a second, it needs to have a method on there. Let's call it void, um, I'm gonna just call it take damage. And that'll take an int for the damage amount. And then we just set it up just like this. We don't have to declare it as public because everything in an interface is public automatically, it has to be. And we're just giving it a method name and a variable. So let's go back over to the car class. Now I'm gonna fix the formatting there. And if I, after a mono behavior add, I take damage, see what happens. You get a red underline here saying the car doesn't implement the interface member, I take damage dot take damage. That's because our car now, if it's gonna be an I take damage object, it needs to actually implement the interface and have that method. So I just do control period, implement interface, and now I have the method and the compiler stops caring, right? So here I could do something like, you know, maybe I have a health field. So I do like private health and I'll just set it to 10. You know what, I'm gonna make this public. Just, no, I'm gonna make it private. I, I can't, can't do it. So private int health equals 10. And then I'll just do damage, or sorry, health minus equals damage. And then we do like if health is less than or equal to zero destroy the game object. So here we're just doing something really simple where we, you know, if this thing takes damage, its health will be reduced and then it'll destroy itself. All right. So we've got an interface here, we've got a car, and you might be wondering, well, why add this interface? We could just have take damage here without this I take damage thing, right? It's, right now it may seem a little bit pointless, but give it just a couple more minutes and it'll, hopefully start to make some sense. So now let's say we want to have a barrel, right? Maybe barrels or something else that you can do damage to. Now let's add that same interface, the I take damage, and we'll implement the interface with control period. And for this barrel, we're just going to make it get destroyed as soon as you click on it, right? Or as soon as it takes damage. So to that, we'll just do destroy game object. And then this is one of the kind of key things with interfaces. The They have to have the same methods and react to the same contract, but how they do it can vary completely. They don't ever have to do the same thing. They just have to implement those same methods. So here we've just got the I take damage on the barrel and let's jump back over to the editor real quick and let's create another C sharp script. We'll call it uh, damage on click. All right, we've got a damage on click. And here let's do a if input dot mouse button down zero. So we're gonna check to see if they left click. I'm gonna clean up this formatting real quick. Get rid of all this extra stuff. There we go. So if they left click, we're gonna do ray ray equals camera dot main dot screen point to ray. So this is just gonna get a ray into our scene. We'll do camera dot, no, sorry. We'll do input dot mouse position. So this just lets us click on things and gives lets us do a raycast into the scene. We'll do if 
physics dot oops physics dot raycast ray comma out hit info and add the lines in here I'll just go like this oh that's not what I wanted we're gonna we want to introduce a, a local here we want to do uh, hit raycast hit sorry raycast hit hit info there we go so if we if we hit into something hit info is gonna have a point and it's gonna have a thing that we clicked on so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the hit info dot collider and we're gonna call it that get component I take damage so we'll call this um, I take damage damage a bull equals that so here we're gonna what we're gonna do is anything we click on we're gonna check to see if it has a dam an I take damage component and we'll assign it to damageable and if it does have one so it, if damageable whoops damage a bull is not equal to null it's called damageable that take damage and we'll just do one damage there Try to like get rid of these extra lines up the top save this out and then let's go into the editor and see what that does real quick so oh first we should create a barrel so let's go 3d object and create a cylinder we'll add the barrel script and then let's create one more object and we'll call this click to damage and we're just going to take the damage on click object save my scene and then hit play all right let's see what happens now so I click on the barrel and it's destroyed as we would expect click on the car nothing's happening that we can tell let's go to the car though and view it in debug mode and just look at the health there we go so you can see the health is six five four three two one so here we can see that we can have this one script here this one uh, damage on click script and it's able to work with multiple different object types by using the interface so using I take damage instead of checking to see is this a car if it's car take damage is it a barrel is it a box if it's a box take damage or do something different on each one of these it gives us a way to have that interaction be specific to the object and not in our damage ability or whatever ability is interacting with it so our damage on click you know imagine this is like a player's spell right you don't want the spell to have to determine you know how does this thing get destroyed how does it interact and take damage or you know like if i click on it what does it do we don't want that all in a single spot we want that spread so that the behavior is kind of specific to the object and that's exactly what setting up an interface like this does now there are some drawbacks some things that you cannot do with an interface for instance say i had a um a game object or a script that wants to reference something like this so i have like a let's see let's call this like spawn damage taker and say i had an object and i wanted to maybe allow it to spawn things that can take damage All right so in a normal situation you could do something like car like private car car prefab you um, just like that and do a serialized field and this would work right so I'd be able to go into the editor and let's create a new object call it a spawn damage taker just to match the script name I could assign this here let's get out of debug mode and I'd be able to just assign a car right so I could put a car in there but if I put in I take damage this is not gonna work anymore so give it just a second and you see it's gone we can't even assign anything there and the reason for that is that I take damage or an interface like this doesn't specifically have a way to tell the editor that oh this is definitely going to be you know an object or component that can be used by the editor this could be any kind of class right it could be on anything it doesn't have to be on something that is set up to work on a game object so to do it in a way that's set up you know so that you can assign these things we would want to switch over to abstract classes and because this is already a little long I'm gonna split that into a second video so you can watch and see the difference with abstract classes
So if you like this and you want to learn more about interfaces, abstract classes, or just C-sharp with Unity in general, don't forget to like and hit the subscribe button. Thanks.